Alexander Kimov was out on September the 1st as announced by Zeka Azevedo of Combate down sure. in Brazil. So as reported by Mr. Zeka Azevedo at a combined weight of 100 kgs, that's what it said when I did the math and, and I did the translation, but what we're looking at is going to be a catch weight of 220 pounds. We have Brazil's Maladinho Jelton Almeida taking on the most aggressively nicknamed man ever, the pleasure man, Anton Terkal, out of Sweden, a guy who trains at All-Stars with the big names. You know them, Hamzat Shemaev, Alexander Gustafsson, uh, who else trains there? There's there's a lot of great fighters that have trained there in the past. And Lee Latifi. You do look at it for Anton Terkal. He was successful getting a win over Acasio Dos Santos on Dana White's Contender Series in Week 1. And if you've watched any of Fight Night Picks Dana White Contender Series shows, which which I implore you to do because these videos here, a lot of people get tripped up. I premiere our full card videos. They're premiered. They're not live because you got to do edits and this and that. But we are live for the Dana White's Contender Series videos. You can chat with us in the chat. We can hang out and so on and so forth. I say that because I was very excited for the Pleasure Man on Dana White's Contender Series. And he performed not so pre pleasurably. He looked good. Don't get me wrong against Sos Santos. He was able to take him down on 11 of 16 takedown attempts. But he held the back a lot, he showboated a little, and Dana White was not happy with anybody other than Joe Pfeiffer on that episode. So I am very surprised that they decided to sign Anton Chakal after that performance. Because the other thing is, he had a long layoff from his fight entering into Contender Series where he got a win over Konstantin Soldatov over with Brave. It was a little over a year ago. For Chakal, his biggest hallmark is his power grappling, his takedowns, and his ground and pound. Which is weird because he's taking on Jalton Almeida, who in the UFC and on Contender Series, well, Contender Series, he beat Nasruddin Nasruddinov, a good grappler, finished him. Then he comes into the UFC, takes on Danilo Marquez, kind of a lights-out grappler, but not lights-out with a striker, his cardio, and he finishes him. And then he takes on Parker Porter, who's like one of the bigger heavyweights, and everybody in the comments section said, no, he's not going to be able to take Parker Porter down. Well, you silly gooses. He took him down and he finished him. So originally Almeida, supposed to be taking on Shamil Durkimov, a guy who weighs in at like 258 pretty well every fight, so a bigger guy. Now, this being a catchweight at 220, you have to figure out Almeida was going to come in around 220, exactly. like he did for his last matchup against Parker Porter. But I look at this one as a very, very weird matchup, and I'm surprised the UFC even made it. I agree 100%. Uh, the catchweight, here's the reasoning behind the catchweight for anybody if they don't know, though. It's just to make sure Jalton Almeida doesn't show up at like 240, because Sterkal is going to be the smaller guy in this fight. The weird thing is, going into the Abdur Akimov matchup, I thought, okay, maybe Abdur Akimov, he'll fight a little bit like Parker Porter, they're saying they're both big, they're strong, they're physical, but he has a little bit more left in him. You know, he's a little bit higher skill value Does he? than Parker Porter. I would say a little bit. He'll land some better shots in the feed, I'd say. Again, it's not an argument I win just because I said it, but I'd rank him a little bit higher. And or, uh, Jalton Almeida, like you said, has shown the ability to fight guys much bigger than him and be way stronger than he has any right to be for being as small of a heavyweight as he is in this division. So I don't know how he isn't going to grapple the smaller Anton Turkal because for Turkal, he's going to rely on a lot of the same weapons that Almeida is. The difference is Almeida's way bigger now. I'd say he's more explosive. And Jalton Almeida is a decent striker at long range. He is someone who'll throw some kicks. He can take chances because his ground game's so good. And that's the thing. I keep on going back to what Dana White had said on week one of uh, Contender Series. No, let me, let me, because I have the quote. Okay. I don't watch anything on anybody before they come here. Be Joe Pfeiffer. Try and finish the fight. Try and win. And then he dropped the mic and left. There you go. But Joe Pfeiffer did look good to his credit. The thing was, yeah, Turk Hall looked good, but not great. And normally on that show, you have to look great to get signed. So I'm kind of surprised to see them just feeding him to the Wolves and one of the best prospects, if you want to still consider him a prospect, and Shelton Almeida at the heavyweight division. It's very strange matchmaking for a card that I've lauded for how good the matchmaking's been. Yeah, like Turk Hall was a minus 225 uh, favorite in that matchup against Dos Santos. 29-28, 29-28, 30-27, the judges had it. And as I said earlier, he went 11-16 on his takedown attempts. He had, what, over 10 minutes, over 11 11 minutes control time almost 12 so he did a great job of that had the backpack position for a lot of it but wasn't able to do anything with it he was kind of egging it on but i uh, for to call coming into dana white's contender series very impressive prospect very good with controlling guys on the ground utilizing his ground and pound his explosiveness with his takedowns that's exactly what almeida does who considers himself the brazilian habib except for jalton he's like edge in 2007 just going for spears across the cage 
gets you down with a double leg, then he wraps the legs, and then he waits till you roll to get your back. And if you do look at it, I mean, for Takal, I gotta say this, 2017 IMMAF European Champion, 11-3 and amateur record, made it to the, the highest heights. He was like a part of IMMAF uh, Asia up near the finals, the world, so on and so forth. But if I do look at it for Almeida, eight of his submission wins are by rear naked choke and that really is his bread and butter so we look at the odds and they're pretty well cooked depending on the sites because there's only a few that have odds because this one is on such short notice for Turkal. Almeida opened up at minus 1500 favorite minus 816 average now Turkal open plus 750 plus 523 we have a look at the topology votes matt surprise to us there to you are they though I'll be cheeky. I'll say over under 97%. I was thinking the exact same. I'm going to say over. You're going to say over 97? That's only 91. 416 total votes. 91% Almeida. 61% by submission. 23% by knockout. For the 9% that I have to recall, what is it? 81% by knockout. So a lot happened to win by knockout. Matt, I, I, it would surprise me if Turkal won this fight. Yeah. Like, a lot. Like, Shelton Almeida, I think, is going to be in the top 15 sooner rather than later in the heavyweight division. Heavyweight or light heavyweight? That's the thing, too. He could move down to 205. Let's say he does suffer a loss at uh, uh, the heavyweight division. He might get out-wrestled. Let's say Curtis Blades, just a bigger, stronger guy. Let's say they have a good fight, a competitive fight, but Blades wins. Shelton Almeida could immediately decide, okay, I'm a 205-er now. Watch me whip. Watch me nay-nay. So, maybe Shelton Almeida is going to have one of those, like, two ranked careers, if you will. But I do expect Almeida to excel in this match. I mean, for Turkal, to me, he looks like a pretty big light heavyweight. And if you look at his career arc, he's had one fight at middleweight. He had a couple of catchweights, 207 and 209. So it'll be interesting to see where both these guys show up at on Friday. Eager to see that. We'll talk about it on Question Mark Kicks on Saturday, two hours before the prelims. But as of now, both of us going with Brazil's Maladinho Jalton Almeida to get the win. A big time card, including a possible fight of the night between Hakeem Dawadu and Julian Arosa. You're not going to want to miss that one. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, we always say. Let's get into 